Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success, but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's Let's get get down down to business business on Tower Tower Talk Talk Business Business Radio Radio, on on the the voice of Nassau Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello, and welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Ray Schwetz, AVP of Community Relations at Jovia Financial Credit Union, along with Denisha Boston Hill, CEO, Keeper of the Brand Marketing and Digital Agency. And we're focused on being the premier resource for business and entrepreneurship. We bring you business advice, tips, tools, and services that help you grow your business. Plus, we interview the top business leaders in the industry. Now, Ray, this is still a crazy time we live in, huh? Yes, very much so. Um, but, you know, we're, we're all evolving. We're adapting, right? Um, you know, we, we have with us someone today who I think is going to provide us with, uh, with some, some great insight. Uh, so providing business empowerment today is Fran Biderman Gross, CEO at Advantages and author of How to Lead a Values-Based Professional Service Firm. So uh, Fran is uh, the CEO of the Advantages uh, New York-based creative agency that engages markets through branding, advertising, consulting, and digital experiences. Fran, welcome to the show today. Oh, thank you, Ray, for having us. I, I say us because we're always such a team, but it's really just me on the call today <laughs> representing everybody. <laughs> yes, yes. But it, but it takes more than just one person to do the work that you're doing. So good to represent the team. So tell Absolutely. us a little bit about yourself. Tell, tell us about your background and, and how you started Advantages. Advantages was born in the back of our garage. Uh, we'll fast forward a uh, lots of years, although, you know, I don't know, decades of experience is definitely not overrated, especially at a time like today. Yes. Uh, we started out really as a little print company. And uh, let's go back to the early 90s before even, I'm going to say, Staples, uh, you know, was on the Van Week Expressway, assuming that we're all, I know, Long Island, Queens, um, and a part of our lives. Back in the day when stationary uh Stationary stores were on every corner, and we used filofaxes and really had collector pens. And while that is still a thing, um, it's definitely a dying art. Um, so we really were a print company, and we were really represented and located in a lot of those back stationary stores in the back corner. You used to have like your little printer, your local printer, where you'd get your business cards and your letterhead and your multi-port forms and all that kind of stuff. And even your promotional items where we do pens and keychains and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day the Van Wick, uh, on the Van Wick, with Staples really came to town and Office Max and they really revolutionized stationary stores and print. And then of course the explosion of the internet really made print accessible. And as we really began to service our clients, they kept asking us to actually help with more and more marketing and branding related things. So being as agile and curious as I was, I bought an agent, you know, a, mar- a branding and marketing agency and really deconstructed it. I deconstructed it because I really wanted to know how it worked and I wanted to understand it. And just about that time, I met Simon Sinek, who challenged the beautiful creativity in all of our award-winning marketing pieces and said, they're beautiful, but they're just like everybody else. And I'm like, do you know me? Like, I get it. They call me the printing princess. You don't know me. You have no right to say that. And that's what was exploding in my head when I met him. And then he went on to, you know, share with us the golden circle back in 2005 was really one of the first times that he had ever uttered it in public. And I'm sitting there screaming in the middle of my head going, you don't know me. How do you criticize my stuff? I'm like, golden circle. Hmm. Why? How? What? This makes so much (laughs) sense. And I was so curious that I, well, I was embarrassed in front of all these people because he was, you know, taking apart my beautiful design work, printed work. Uh, I was really curious and I really started a conversation with him and I waited to actually be the last person online that night to kind of like, all right, tell me about this golden circle thing. We got so engrossed into a a conversation that we ended up, I ended up hiring him to help me, you know, 
tell me my why. And that really set me on a course. And we had done a fair amount of work together for the following couple of years uh, to, you know, I just wanted to understand how could I apply this? How does it work? Uh, what does an elevator pitch sound like when it's, you know, has your why in it? And, and then it became like, wait a minute, the why is not really enough, but I need to really understand the values and how that works and what's the story thing and how are, we, how are we putting this all together and how could I make these beautiful printed brochures and award-winning websites with really amazing copy or communications? And that's really what had us on this, started us on this path. So we've really been doing this for quite the, some time now in really perfecting in a very simple way how to define your brand because you are your brand. Whether you have a, whether you're Ogilvy, whether you're Unilever, ConAgra, Pepsi, or the local accountant down the street, you are a brand. You represent an organization. And if you don't define it, it will define you. So fast forward a few years and here we are. Um, we've really evolved into a, re- a leading boutique brand and communications agency that really at the heart of our core competencies understands how to how to create something that's minimal and incredibly viable a brand so these are the three keys this is where the book ties in we've made it really simple for you purpose values and story i i encourage everyone at this time to pull out their brand guide or their style guide or their brand book or all the work that they've ever done with any branding expert or marketing agency and look for the answers of your three keys. And if they're not in there, you have some work to do. We're happy to help, but that's what you need to survive today. You can't survive without this emotionally captive communication that actually has emotion and feeling that jump right out into it because that's what good brands do. They take a stand for something that they believe in and they showcase it in all of their communications and all of their actions, internally and externally. Uh, you are listening to Tara Talk Business Radio on the voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill. And our guest today is Fran Biderman Gross, CEO at Advantages and author of How to Lead a Values Based Professional Service Firm. So, Fran, uh, you touched on it uh, before. Um, so what, what sort of things are, are you hearing from your clients and what sort of things are you employing to, to pivot in what's going on today? So that is the question of the hour, yes. um, maybe every half hour if I have 30-minute calls. Uh, <laughs> so what we have done is reached out to every – we are in service. Advantages exist to do one thing. Now, we do many things to achieve that one thing, but the one thing is to help every entrepreneurial business owner achieve that dream. Now, we do that, and we are dedicated to doing that through marketing activities. And trust me, I know everybody runs scared, and you, and you kind of should, because marketing is like that big black hole. Every, they dump everything into marketing, and it's kind of not fair. We get a really bad rap. But let's just separate it for one second because let's just get clear on your brand. Get, your, get clear on your three keys and how you tell that story. And then we can talk about pivoting because everybody says, oh my God, Fran, doom and gloom. It's like the apocalypse of business. And I'm sitting here going, are you kidding me? There is so much opportunity. You just have to find it. All right. So when I can get them in the mindset and connected to, okay, I met you X months, years, days ago. You told me this crazy story on how you started your company. And I want to help you get in touch with those feelings so we can start right now bringing that back into play. And let's just, let's just go there. And there's, they're like, Fran, I just, I just want to know how many clients I can get in the next 60 days. So when my PPP money runs out that I'm not cash flow negative, come on. I know this is all in your heads. It's in mine but you can't do that. You have to start from, we can build back better. Let's get in touch with those feelings. I know this sounds like super psychological and emotional, but it's the place to start. Because if you start with the pressure and noise of, oh my God, I have to make my sales goal, you're never going to do it. 
And then let's start talking about, okay, let's talk about how you used to get your clients. Where? How? Where are they now? How do we get in touch with them? How do we, how do, do we just call? For the last literally three, four weeks, we've literally gone down existing, previous client lists. We're just calling people and asking them if they're okay. And do they need help? No charge. We're all in a pandemic. No one's buying anything. They can't. They're too scared to let the money go out of their hands, even if they have it. So what's the difference? So let me be of service to you. Let me help you. Do you need, do you need a help? Do you need help communicating to your employees that we're only coming back three days a week, not five days a week? Do you need help writing any communications? What can I do to help you? Whether you're a current client or not, we are taking calls from anybody who needs help right now to build those relationships. If you want to talk about pivoting, of service, you can't, to quote Tom Gretsch, and Denisha will know exactly what I'm, where I'm going with this, you cannot come on the other side of this, whatever that looks like, without doing good. You are going to be judged by what you have done during this pause. And I love and appreciate and applaud all the people who are learning how to bake and doing great things with their family and cleaning out some of the photo albums. And I'm doing some of that too, just not nine to five, five days a week. So my priority is during the business workday to the best of my ability is to reach, to find, to talk, to support, to serve, which is very much in alignment with our own single purpose, which is to help you, the entrepreneurial leader, the business person, the CEO, the president of your company, achieve what you set out to achieve, to achieve. Absolutely. And so many people are, friends, so many people are going through denial, you know, depression. There's so many states out there, you know, Ray's at home. He's in, he's working in his, his basement office. You know, I'm, you know, we're all working remotely. Um, it, it's just, uh, I, how do you get out of that? You know, how do you get out of that funk? How do you, you know, pick yourself up and, and say, okay, I need to take a moment to find my purpose, to focus on the keys. You know, what, do you, what are some recommendations you have for people that are listening? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, that's, that's, that's a really hard thing to do. And there is no doubt that I am human just like you. And I struggle every day to be purposeful and remain intentional. And trust me, my team will tell you that I fall out of line, that I'm human, but I will also tell you that when I get up every day, I take 10 minutes to think good thoughts. I take 10 minutes to read good thoughts, and I take 10 minutes to set the intention for the day, 10, 10, 10, (laughs) because that really sets my mind and my full being into a place of service. Because if my purpose is to help you live yours, then I have to be in the emotional space to be ready to be there to support you to do that. And the only way I can do that is to be in touch with why I quit my day job and started Advantages and pivoted Advantages. I mean, I, I, I too, you know, I have lost family in this pandemic and I have experienced, you know, difficult emotional loss. I have watched friends go through the same thing. I have supported organizations that deeply deal with domestic violence and sexual abuse. Could you imagine living under a roof with your own predator right now? I mean, like, there is some severe things going on that that being of service has to keep me intentionally passionate about achieving the things that I want to, and it's work. It does not come easy. My co-author, who was once my client, said to me, you know, Fran, what you do is so hard. It is such a slog, but once you're on the other side of it, it's so simple, and it's clear, and it's easy, but it takes work to, to practice it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. I have to ask you. um, So we talked about a lot of challenges. We talked about how you're pivoting the things that you're doing for, you know, your clients. Um, You know, what's next? Because I kind of look at this as, 
that certainly there's a short term, what you can do to find the opportunities. And then there's the long term. So what do you feel like is next for you? You know, that's actually a two part question. And it's a really good one. We actually at 11 o'clock this morning, we had a strategic discussion about short term, long term. And really, we believe, and this is not going to be easy for us to do, but to anchor on the long term, it's a long term play. We have to stay remain true to the fact that we are very good at helping individuals, leaders, CEOs, if you will, define their brand. And, you know, it's really, um, I keep exploring, like, if you guys, if branding, if the word brand scares you and it sounds expensive, I can't help that. Not because it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, right? You don't have to go to a big branding fancy agency. You don't need, you know, a 60 page brand guide to say, oh my gosh, I'm proud I have a brand. We have simplified it and made it affordable. We have given you the, the ability to actually strengthen and give you the tools to actually strengthen all of your communications, like the underpinning, like, you know, the underpinning of a building, the real foundation, the bedrock, the stuff that doesn't move or ever break. Those are the three things you need. That's it. You have the, you have to stop being scared. I have to talk to you listeners about the word brand scares you. Yeah. Too bad. Get over it. You need the three keys. You need the three keys because that's all you need. So stop getting scared. Stop getting, getting scared of going, oh my God, to build a brand is hundreds and thousands of dollars and months of time. It's not. So I have to take the long play. And you know what's really scary? It's scary because um, we need sales now just like you. So what's the short-term play? What's the pivot? So the first thing is I want to lean into purpose. So I want to pivot with purpose, to purpose, on purpose, the triple P, because if I can, look, I don't be, I know that there's a lot of really good opportunity right now for companies that actually have marketing agencies who might not have been happy with them. There's a huge opportunity to say, wait a minute, if you look at what, what everybody is putting out right now, you're going to be judged on what you did. If you don't do good, you're not going to do well. If you look at what Deloitte is putting out, it's all about agility and intention and passion and purpose and how you hold your team together and, and to really come together even ways that we never thought we could. Oh, my God, I've been on Zoom for five years. Look what an explosion this has been. So the Zoom meeting, right, now we're having – all right, you get a margarita, I'll get a margarita. That's how we're going to have happy hour. We're going to break barriers through video conferencing. We're going to find new ways. That's not pivoting. That's breaking through. Pivoting is adjusting to how are you going to do what you did well before, better. How are you going to better connect? How are you going to find the people that you want to find that are actually really good, intentional your ideal clients, where are they now? You've got a huge opportunity because you know where they're not. They're not at conventions. They're not at networking events. You got to find them. So go surf the Zoom rooms, not bomb, but like go surf, go see what's out there. I mean, we all have like webinar fatigue. My God, I think I do several a week and I love doing them, but I hate being on them. Not that I hate, I'm like, okay, I love giving them, but I hate, that doesn't sound right. I, I hate being a participant on them hour after hour, right? We all have like, like yeah. webinar fatigue. Mm-hmm. But the truth is we're still, look, I was, I was on a webinar with uh, Brene, Brown, Brene Brown, right? The, I, I, and last week I was watching her. I'm like, uh, I could listen to her all day long. But find what interests you and learn something new and figure out how to apply it. You are listening to Tower Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Fran Biederman Grossman, CEO at Advantage and author of How to Lead a Value Based Professional Service Firm. My name is Danisha Boston Hill, along with Ray Schwetz on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. So, yeah, that's a lot. Um, I mean, it's. Um... And I think you've answered it, the short term and the long term. Those are, those are the ways to, to kind of tackle things. What would be, 
and this is kind of tough, but if you had to leave our listeners with one thing, what would be the one thing you would want to leave them with? Honestly, the one thing that I would tell them is don't be scared, right? We all are, therefore, don't be, right? Embrace this as, you know, every obstacle really is an opportunity. So you're not alone. We're all trying to figure it out. Talk to people. Like sales is dead. Just build relationships. You will transactionally transact with people. They will buy your stuff, but they will only buy your stuff if they like you and they align with your beliefs. So, you know, people, it's really the one thing. Just don't be afraid to be yourself. We're all in uncharted territory and we can build back better. I mean, really, this, this community, we're, there's so many... There's so many conversations about how reminiscent 9-11, right? How, we're, how the yes. pre and post 9-11 mm-hmm. this is. And you know what? We built back better. You know, we went from an Inc. 5000 to an Inc. 500 company, 50 best places to work post 9-11, post 2008. So we've, we've built back a number of times and I am excited for the future. Scared, but excited. And I'm going to take my own advice. I'm going to jump in and say, I'm not going to laugh at being scared, but I'm going to, I'm going to contain it and, and put it somewhere else. Don't be scared. Do your thing. Get in touch with your passion. Re- open that up and call people. Talk to them and, and bring the excitement with you. Put the doom and gloom away. I like it a lot. And I think we need to follow your passion and we need to follow your purpose for sure. I'd also like to talk about your book. Um, So just give us a little bit about your book and uh, where we can find it. So the best way to tell you a little bit about this really difficult titled book (laughs) is to tell you a story, which I hope you'll remember. So I get a call from a very close friend of mine who says, listen, there's a global company that made an acquisition And they're running a logo competition. And I want you to speak to the global CMO and I want you to take the assignment. And I said to her, are you out of your mind? I do not design logos. I build brands. She goes, you design logos, don't you? And I said, yeah, you know I do. She said, Fran, take the damn call. So I took the call. And what was life-changing about that call was the mindset, right? She put me in the right mindset. She said to me, let them buy a logo, you deliver a brand. And I did. And in 42 minutes, after 30 days of exploration, and all I got was their briefs, their previous history about each company, and 30 minutes with was a Q&A with the eight decision makers who were on this brand, this global brand um, panel. Mm. So I took everything I could. I couldn't waste a conversation. I didn't have enough time to even get clarifying questions in. I asked these eight people 30 minutes of questions. And trust me, it's not a long time. You don't get to ask many So they had to be good. And I collected all of that information and I painted a picture about their brand, evoking curiosity based on what I heard. And around the table, as and I told them the story that if I were building the brand, this is the story I would tell with a clear intention to evoke curiosity. And then after I had spent 11 minutes or so out of those 40 some odd, painting the verbal side of what I believe their new evolution of their brand should be. Then I delivered the four different logos, again, with very little input. And I printed them and I actually tactically printed business cards with the CEO who was in the meeting with his name on it and his title. And I passed around all four logos. So not only could they see them on the screen, but they could touch them and see how they could be possibly behave in real life so they could really touch them. And needless to say, I beat the three internal teams that were inside this competition and the branding agency that was hired to deliver a logo 
now became the trusted, behind the curtain, if you will, brand uh, Sherpa, really <laughs> helping the CEO roll out this a new unified rebrand. And we were incredibly successful. And we built a relationship. And the story goes when, when Don, my co-author, called me to say, Fran, it's one o'clock. Here are the results of the, the finals. And I'm like, okay, it's me against somebody else. He goes, you win. Congratulations. It was unanimous. And as he's saying this, I said, oh, my God, that's amazing. Don, when are we going to go out to dinner? And as he's thinking about this, going, I'm in London next week. How about the week after Tuesday looks good? In my mind, I'm screaming, oh, my God, did you just ask a global CEO out to dinner? And what do you know? We went out to dinner. And you know what? That was the first, the very first of a beautiful, you know, just an incredibly beautiful relationship. And we have such a beautiful friendship. And every couple of weeks, we go out to dinner. And a few months later, he said, oh, my God, you have this incredible, simplistic framework it's a beautiful approach to understanding how brands need to really, really get their strength in their communications before they even get to logo. I want to write a book with you. And I was like, I'm like, great. What is it on? He was like, <laughs> I was like, listen, I know that you've got this completely thought out already in my mind. I'm, of course, I'm just going to go with it. And he mapped out why we should write this book, um, how to lead a values-based professional services firm. And the subtitle, which I really think of as the book, which is the three keys to unlock purpose and profit, is really what the book's about. It's about these three keys, purpose, values, and story. And every aspect of your business, when you understand them and you apply them, you will create this unified, passionate place that really hums and is incredibly efficient, and you will drive profitability in every aspect of it. So... What does a marketing branding girl have to do with writing a leadership book? It's all about the three keys. So that's what the really the book's about. Um, and it's incredibly appropriate to what we do because really, if you think about our number one purpose is to really help leaders achieve and realize the dreams that they have, it uses the three keys to do that. And the way that the agency does that is by actually – rallying the teams around them and obviously acting as their agent on the marketing side, taking care of all of those activities. Fran, we'd like to thank you for being our guest on our show today. My name is Danisha Boston Hill, along with Ray Schwartz, and this is an NCC Foundation Business Leaders Council production. Visit NCC slash WHPC for more information. Available on iHeartRadio as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcast, and Speaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk to you next week.